The band is now me, and uh, it's uh, Red Nails. The Opus, Opus three. three. This uh, <laughs> one of my friends found this in one of my old bands, the the Angry Pills. Uh, my drummer got this, and I'd I'd never used a Moog. I mean, I knew what they were. I knew who Bob was, but I just fell in love with this thing. <laughs> it's it's just crazy. Um, Tons and tons of people have used them. Uh, I mean, I've seen uh, I've seen Blur use them. I know Weezer used them. Um, just a lot of uh, a lot of early late '80s, early '90s bands used them. Um, they've gone up in price in the last few years. Um, I mean, they they usually start around 600. Um, back in the day, though, you know, 10 years ago when this one came around, you could get them for 100, 150 dollars. Um, it has three banks, a, a string synthesizer, an organ synthesizer, and uh, a organ slash brass synthesizer, but that also makes a lot of the bass tones. Um, and you, uh, you have a bank here where you can blend your different tones. You have your knobs here which create the volume of them, and then a switch to switch them on or off. So you can use one you can use two, you can use three, whatever you want. And this is full-time polyphonic. There is, there's no mono on this. And this may be one of the first polyphonic Moogs. Um, and uh, yeah, this is just a great piece. You get the really, the really good cheesy 80s string sounds out of it. Um, I can blend the tones and get almost a farfisa sound out of it, real piercing, real cheesy kind of organ sounds. Um, you can also get just crazy bass all the way up to just ear piercing squeals out of it just by adjusting your, uh, your filters and um, just uh, the, different, the different knobs. But this, like the, uh, like the concert mate, it's uh, the things that I like about these analog um, analog synthesizers over digital synthesizers is that you do you just it's so much simpler to use everything is right here in front of you you don't have menus to click through you don't have anything to deal with so live on the fly you know exactly what you need to do you switch it you go playing live you kind of have to test them out because there's definitely been times at gigs where uh, I've gone up and pressed the button and nothing happens and it's like all right did it finally die what what is going on is do I have a bad chord what's happening but There'll just be one slider that's slid the wrong way, and you get nothing until you figure that out. Um, the other thing that affects these is uh, humidity can affect them. The temperature can affect them. Um, it uh, it can change tune in the middle of a song while you're playing. So I mean, there is an adventure side to using analog equipment. That that is the advantage of digital in that everything is exact. All right. So we're just going to play the organ here. So. And if you throw some bass into it. This was mid mid early 80s. I mean, actually probably, probably late 70s, early 80s. It's wide ranging in that you really can create from really tinny, high pitched organ sounds all the way up to sort of a Hammond kind of sound. Um, with your strings, you can make really singular, tinny string sounds all the way up to very thick, very heavy string sounds. With your, uh, with your organ bank here, you have an equalizer, and with these two sliders on the side, you can slide that over to the bass and then your equalizer here is is controlling your your bass frequencies mm -hmm. if you slide it over here your equalizer is controlling your string frequencies um, it it does have limitations in the you know I mean you can't really you can't really get precise sounds as far as you know uh, a digital keyboard where you can hit horn and it sounds like whatever a trombone or whatever it is that you're really trying to make it sound like but you can build reasonable facsimiles of those sounds and get the real, I mean, it's, it's the real 80s sound, like your 80s pop music, where, where the stuff sounds good, but it doesn't sound exactly like the instrument that they're trying to emulate. And it works pretty well as a noise, just a noisemaker. Um, frequency sweeps, 
Um, I'll use it a lot for that in recording, just like add a certain part in a song, just make one sleep in the background just to add depth or something. And just as, a, as an easily portable, just quick, easy organ with fewer things to go bad, I mean it's great for just using as an organ. Um, I think it was the Black Keys that I saw when they were using one and they had like a, a piece of wood or cardboard or something that they stuck in between two keys so it held the keys down. And so those two keys were creating just a tone in the background, like a droning sound behind what the entire band was playing. And it was just that way, the whole, uh, the whole song. Alright. With your, your brass, you've got that. It's nice to have them both because I can play, be playing bass lines here and then be playing melodies here. And this one needs needs to be taken apart and cleaned out. It's been done before, but uh, when they built these, they put a uh, like almost a sound dampening foam or something inside them, and that stuff breaks down into a black putty. And so you have to get in. Uh, get into them and clean them out sometimes.